Hello, and welcome back to a very special pen talk. And yes, it is my 700th pen related video. Not a number that I could have comprehended when I started this channel many, many years ago, but here we are. And for my 700th video, we're going to do something a little different. We're going to take the way back machine way back to the early 1900s when postcards were a very common way of communicating. And obviously, you wrote on the back of the postcard. At least that's what started in 1907 when the postcard evolved into a method of communications. The postcard has been around for a long time, and it's still around. Back then, it was one of the main means of uh, quick note communications. Maybe it has evolved into text messaging or other types of electronic messaging, but this is the origins. So we're going to dive in, take a look at a number of cards, take a look at the writing on them, and hopefully you'll find it interesting. And we're also going to look at what I consider to be my oldest fountain pen. This leather case is decayed pretty good. But here's the pen. And it's a Paul Wirt. The, the, see the engraving is 85. It's just, I'm assuming is 1885. It's a little bit of discoloration on the cap. It's a pull-off cap. And we see um, an overfeed. That nib is certainly not going to flex much. And it's an interesting design, which we've seen in some modern pens where that cap just posts right there. Fits nicely in the hand. It feels like a pencil or a quill, which is probably what a lot of people may have used before then. I haven't really taken it apart or done anything with it. It's not a pen that I'm going to write with. We're going to start with a pen that people may have used to write these cards. They probably just used a dip pen, but they discuss fountain pens a lot in these postcards. All these cards have some very witty sayings on the front of the postcard. This is the one we're going to start with. Some people are like fountain pens. They do write occasionally. There's an interesting artist rendition of a, of a fountain pen, and it's signed by the artist there at the bottom. And Jess Blow, I think, may have been credited with that phrase. We flip it over, we'll see it's from 1912, and it was addressed to a person in Stockton, California. And the note is, glad to hear from you once more. What on earth are you doing, chasing around from one town to another? Crockett is still on the map, and all are okay. Where is your side now? Regards, Kate. So I thought that was interesting note. We go on to the next card. We'll see another interesting saying. Tis seldom that we stop to think how just a tiny drop of ink can cheer some heart, remove some care, and send love's message anywhere. Beautiful saying. We flip it over. We'll see this card was addressed in 1913 and to a person in Waterville, Maine. And they wrote the other way. And hello, Pearl. Mother reached home Tuesday morning after spending a lovely week over your way. She enjoyed seeing you so much. This is written, obviously, in, I think, a fountain pen or a, a dip pen of some manner. You can see how they dip it and it gets lighter and then they dip it again and it gets darker. So that's interesting. We go on to the next one. And again, the saying is, when you get this fine new pen... I hope that you will write me then. Uh, interesting doll figure there holding a dip pen. If we flip this one over, we'll see it's dated 1914. All of the postcards have the same one cent stamp on them. This is in Wisconsin. The address seems to have been modified a few times. We're assuming it eventually was delivered. And if we look at the writing here, which is done in another direction, it says, received your card last week. Decided to write you sooner, but hoped 
to, I've been so very busy, we are real busy preparing for Christmas. Wish you were here to help. So that's another interesting note and written with a similar type of pen that the other postcard was written in. Now go on to another interesting saying. Dip your pen in ink, mix a bit of affection with it, put it under a postage stamp and send it along. Not rhyming, but interesting statement. This is from 1914 also. And here we are, um, a New Jersey postcard, so close to home. And it looks like somehow it had been not addressed properly, but you'll notice there's no street address, just a name and a city and a state. And this is Dear Cousin. Just a few lines to let you know I'm among the living. That's an interesting way of starting the postcard. William Burroughs, Mrs. Martha Halpin died. William Huxman, Aaron's son, was buried yesterday. Certainly not a cheer-up card, but who knows what life was like back then, and this writer at least is saying that they're in good health, and they want to hear from the person they sent the card to. Now we go on to another card. Obviously, they've spilled some ink with this one. My pen and ink are on the blink. It jars my system when I think, and writing letters makes me shrink. So if you sigh for my reply and call me names as times goes by, this will explain the reason why. Ah, interesting way of saying I haven't written for a while. We flip it over, and I can't determine what year it was, but it's obviously in the early part of the 1900s, same stamp. Here I'm pretty certain they've written it in pencil, and glad to hear from you. Hug brown eyes for me. I'm going back to some uh, address, so call up after you come back. Love to both. Williams. Here we have cards which I think are kind of like uh, the, what's turned into greeting cards today. So this, this one is Best Wishes with an interesting um, gold and ebonite pen on the cover with a postcard. We flip this one over and we'll see that it's Schenectady, New York. It's 1908 and there's just an address, no city. We're assuming it was sent to somebody in Schenectady and no note. The other interesting thing is this was a postcard made in Germany. So that places it in a certain spot. Here's one that's in a similar design. It's a birthday greetings card. We flip this one over. We'll see it's also 1908 in Germantown, Ohio. And uh, it's to friend Wes wishing you many returns of the day. We are truly yours, Mr. and Mrs. Simple message. I'm assuming it was a birthday greeting. And here's another little saying. I know you'd write a line or two if you just stop and think how much I prize a note from you. So here's both pen and ink. I don't know how they would have sent that with a card, but we'll flip this one over. See, this is uh, 1911, and it's Florin, California, but again, no address. So I'm assuming that the post office knew how to deliver it to Mr. and Mrs. Carlisle. And the saying here is, my dear mother and father. So this was his daughter. So it's, this is a daughter sending their card. I did not think I will be able to get home Friday. If I come, it will be sometime Friday, sometime Saturday. I'm fine. Hope this finds you the same with love, daughter. Interesting statement. So our last card of the group is another one trying to gear and get people to write. So you get as a common theme here that people want everybody else to write. Communications was interesting, and this was a main reason, and it cost a penny. Right. I've held this thing until I'm dizzy. I think it's time that you get busy. Interesting statement. This is from 1917. This is the last and latest card based on the uh, postage stamping. This is another one with no address, but just a name and a Georgetown, New York. And they dated us when they wrote it, which is nice. Hello, Rose. 
thought I would find out if you were dead. Another nice positive way to start a card. I wrote a long time ago, but have not heard from you ever. Your friend, Haiti. So, if you think people were um, kind of cruel today in their ways of communicating, um, I think it started a long time ago. So, I hope you enjoyed that kind of nostalgic look back into a period of time which certainly precedes all of us. And a time when writing was the way people communicated, where you took pen and ink, wrote a card, and sent it off to a friend, a relative, and hoped to get a response back. So, I would like to encourage all of you to write, even if it's just a postcard. They're a little bit more than a penny now, but I'm certain they're equally affordable. So put some ink on paper. Send it to somebody you want to communicate with. And don't expect a response. It's nice to get one, but it's more important for you to send your thoughts out. And hopefully, if it's something you're, the person who receives your thoughts, they will respond. Not something that you need to expect. I hope this video finds you safe, healthy, and happy, enjoying your pens, enjoying putting ink on paper, and sharing those thoughts. And we've now looked at how people used to do that well over a century ago. I reached the end of this video. Thank you all for watching. I appreciate all of you. Leave me some comments and let me know what you think about writing letters. We're going to say bye. Till later, be safe.